Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our mini summit. And uh, today, I uh, I would like to introduce our uh, LLM auto box capability, and also the work uh, our team is is doing for high performance in efforts and uh, training. Uh, in my back, we have a team working on this, and uh, I represent the team to give you the introduction. I'm I'm Gui Jingao from the Opera community. Okay, uh, so uh, our out of box uh, uh, user experience covers the all entire LM op operation life cycles. Uh, let's first uh, have a look at uh, usually what's the process that people doing the uh, large language model uh, uh, deployment and uh, and uh, running. Uh, usually, uh, first uh, it uh, pulling the uh, original models from the model community, and after that. Uh, we will do a model op optimization, and after the optimization, we build the new uh, image for it, and then push it to the community. At the deployment time, and uh, it usually pulling the optimized model from the community and uh, deploy and running. Of course, at the running time, uh, it utilizes the operators on the system to do the, uh, to perform the efforts, for example. And uh, so for the entire uh, life cycle that we have some technologies to uh, speed up the, the deployment and also to optimize the workload, uh, to optimize the performance of the workload. For example, uh, at the deployment and the booting uh, stage, we have uh, lazy loading, uh, image lazy loading, and also the P2P uh, network transmission technology to speed up the deployment and the booting. And uh, at the runtime, we have some te technologies that uh, utilize the hardware capability to uh, improve the, the uh, performance. And uh, in the following pages, I will give uh, some details about what we are doing. Okay, uh, this is for the deployment and the booting, yeah. Usually the, uh, the AI container image is quite large, and the pinpoint is that uh, the, the time to uh, transmit the image and the booting is uh, quite slow. And uh, uh, for this, uh, we, we have two technologies. One is that uh, uh, the asynchronous lazy loading, that means that uh, uh, when the image is booting, it only transmits the necessary part, not the entire Im image. And the, uh, uh, the entire image is transmitted uh, asynchronized. So it will save quite some uh, loading, image loading times. For example, it, uh, it can save 80% uh, of the loading time and uh, speed up the booting. Another, another technology is we utilize the peer-to-peer -peer technology and uh, using the multi, multiple procedures to speed up the transmission. This can uh, resolve the problem that uh, the slow register. For example, the register's uh, node stress is, uh, is heavy. That causes some uh, slow uh, image loading. This P2P uh, transmission can resolve this kind of problem. That's another technology we use to uh, improve the image loading and uh, booting. Okay, uh, for the runtime optimization, uh, we currently working on the uh, CPU efforts. We, we use the Llama.cpp to do the efforts on the Huawei Quenpeng uh, ARM server. Actually, uh, we utilize some uh, ARM uh, instruction to optimize the matrix multiplication uh, process. For example, uh, at the beginning, it used the dot prod. Uh, 
it needs to load two times and output one dot product result. And then we, we switch to use the SMLA, and then it improves the efficiency for two times. Uh, it loads load four times and output four dot product results. And uh, after uh, our new product has the SME, we can use the SME uh, instruct to uh, further uh, optimize the, the efficiency. It loads uh, eight times and the output uh, uh, 16 dot product results. The, the efficiency is, is doubled. This is the, the operator optimization. Uh, besides all this, we also uh, do some work on the tensor parallel. For tensor parallel, for example, for, uh, for matrix multiplied plate file, we split the data and uh, distribute the data to different uh, new mass zone. And uh, then we have the uh, parallel tasks uh, to calculate the different part of the matrix. Uh, this, this can actually uh, maximize the, the memory bandwidth and uh, also uh, maximize the, the computing capability of the chip and uh, <coughs> get the uh, quite good result. Here, here is the, the result uh, we tested. And uh, from, from the chart, you can see that uh, for the fraud token generation speed, uh, uh, we achieved uh, up to 2.7 times uh, performance improving. And also for the uh, next token decoding speed, uh, we uh, achieved uh, almost uh, three times uh, performance improving. And uh, from, from the demo, you can see the obvious rate increase after the optimization. Okay, uh, the, for other technologies to, uh, to optimize the inference, uh, one technology is the converged uh, memory management. Yeah, uh, uh, you know before, uh, for the GPU or accelerator uh, man memory management, usually it's, it's being uh, done on the driver and also in the runtime. Uh, it has a separate uh, uh, memory management uh, stack for the, for the accelerator and the GPU or NPU. For example, uh, the typical uh, example is CUDA. If you want to uh, manage the, the HBM on the GPU, you need to use the uh, separated stack and a separate uh, API interface to do the memory management. And also you need to uh, copy, the, the developer need to copy and move in data between the host and the GPU by, by himself. The, the programming is quite uh, complicated and also the, uh, the performance, of course, uh, it can achieve quite good performance if it's doing right, but if not doing right, the performance also impact. Uh, for this, actually, we introduced a unified heterogeneous memory management framework uh, for the Linux kernel. And uh, with the framework, actually, uh, the memory management is uh, is uh, treated on the Linux memory management uh, stack, and uh, the driver need to adopt to the framework to to management the to manage the heterogeneous memory. And uh, with this with this feature, actually, uh, uh, before it's a separate uh, page table and uh, separate management. With this feature, actually, we shared the same uh, page table for the host memory and also for the uh, heterogeneous memory. So <coughs> it's, uh, it's transparently the memory can expand between the host and the, and the accelerator. And then uh, it can utilize the host memory if the heterogeneous HBM memory is not uh, big enough. Uh, together with the high performance transmission and also compression and the uh, de duplication and uh, near computing uh, uh, multiple copies with all these technologies together with the unified memory management, uh, we can achieve the, the inference throughput uh, 
fifty percent increase. Of course, the for some scenarios, the latency is impact. Uh, we we can target to for those scenarios that uh, the latency is not sensible. For for example, uh, you use the text to generate the picture. It's uh, it's not uh, so critical if the uh, latency is uh, decreased. For this scenario, actually, the technology can improve the throughput and uh, get a better uh, efficiency for the for the server and uh, for the hardware. Yeah, another another uh, feature is uh, coverage scheduling. Yeah, you know, uh, we we on the same server node, we have uh, multiple uh, uh, computing resource, for example, the CPU, the GPU, or NPU. So how to utilize the resource efficiently actually is the topic. Uh, uh, before, uh, before, uh, before what we, we are doing actually people manage the, let the developer to manage the, the resource. For example, developer decide to use CPU or to use the GPU. Uh, actually, it introduces the complete programming also uh, possible uh, performance decrease. And uh, uh, for for this actually, we our our idea is to let the system, the operating system, to do the uh, scheduling to for the for the upper applications, so that we can have a better uh, resource efficiency. For example, uh, we 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 are doing a coordinated scheduling between the the host CPU and the NPU. And uh, the scenario we are target is uh, is uh, uh, spec speculative inference. Uh, for the speculative inference, actually, it yields two models: one small models on host side, and another model, big models on on the NPU side. And uh, so, uh, it uses the small uh, models to do the inference, and uses the uh, large models to do the verification. If the verification is okay, then the result is used. If not okay, it 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 uses the large model to do the inference. Actually, it 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 it's the mechanism to use the two models to coordinate to get a better throughput of the inference. Uh, for this scenario, we, our uh, coordinated scheduling actually uh, scheduling the different kind of, of operations between the host CPU and uh, NPU. Uh, and uh, together with the uh, new mark affinity segment, seg segmentation uh, parallel, also the, the dynamic uh, uh, time division multiplexing of the NPU, together with those uh, technologies, I, actually we also get a uh, uh, throughput uh, increase, uh, almost 30% uh, increase. Okay, uh, this, this is for the training, not for the efferis. Uh, actually, uh, for the training workload, uh, what, what we are facing is uh, usually uh, the, the failure. When, when there is a failure uh, or faulty node, uh, it, it, it occurred, the, the whole training process needs to be stopped and restart. So uh, how how we uh, detect this kind of faulty node is quite important because if you uh, identify the faulty node, you can have some uh, method to recover or mi migrate the task to avoid the overall broken of the whole uh, training process. Uh, so uh, for the for the faulty node detection, actually uh, we 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 have some. Uh, Technology that uh, to detect the slow node. Usually, a faulty node first became slow and then uh, broken. So uh, we have agent on the on the node to to monitor the training iteration delay. If the uh, training iteration delay uh, exceed the the uh, exceed the the threshold, then uh, we uh, for at least three times, then we think it's a faulty node. We need to take action to do the diagnosis 
and uh, to find out the reason and take actions. And uh, also we monitoring the, the KPIs of different resources. After the uh, slow node is detected, we uh, diagnose the node using the indicators on the, on, on the node by the agent and uh, find out the 40 types of the, of, of the resource. And uh, after that, uh, we take action. Uh, so after the 40 node is detected, then uh, we have two ways to, to handle it. Uh, first is to recover, to recover the node uh, in place. That, that means, for example, the hardware is okay, just maybe the so software has some problem and uh, we need to uh, restart the hardware to get the work resumed. Uh, then we can do the in-place uh, recovery. And uh, also, if the hardware has some problem, we, we need to uh, mig migrate the task to other node. That, that two, that two methods, we handle this kind of 40 node. And uh, yeah, uh, so uh, this all requires the, the heterogeneous task migration. Because you know, uh, uh, we before had some technology, for example, CRIU, to mig migrate the task on CPU side, but uh, it can't uh, migrate the task with the uh, GPU workload or NPU workload. Uh, so we are doing some work to, to do the uh, migration for those kind of tasks that involve the GPU and uh, NPU or other accelerators, so that we can uh, achieve the uh, the task migration for uh, to another node or in place recovery. Uh, before before the uh, task migration, usually the traditional way to recover a training workload is, is is to do the checkpoint and restore. Just the checkpoint and restore is is doing on the user space. For example, in the in the PyTorch framework and the training training app called the uh, Py, uh, PyTorch framework to do the uh, checkpoint and restore. It's some, it, 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 it works, just uh, it's some problem. For example, uh, you can't do the checkpoint too frequently because it also uh, has the cost. And uh, for example, if we do the uh, checkpoint uh, every two hours, actually uh, for average, uh, it will lost one hour's training data. This is the one problem. Another problem is that uh, the resume, resume time is quite, quite long. For example, usually it's more than uh, 25 uh, minutes to recover, uh, to re resume a checkpointed uh, task. So uh, with, with our, our technology to do the uh, in-place uh, migration or, or task migration to other node, to do the, uh, to do the uh, checkpoint restore use our technology actually it's, the, the resuming time can reduce to 10, uh, 10 minutes, under 10 minutes. And uh, of course, there is some limitations. For example, if the hardware is broken, the heterogeneous hardware is broken, you can't uh, copy the status data from the, the hard, uh, broken hardware, then this, this, this technology doesn't work. Uh, if this occurs, uh, it can uh, tend to the traditional checkpoint and restore method, just uh, take some loss. But uh, for the scenario that the data, we can't we can get the copy of the data. This can save quite some uh, time to do the task migration and also resuming. Okay, uh, that's that's all I want to introduce for today. And uh, any question? Okay, thank you.